Sergeant and Mrs. Smith, you are going to love this house. Is that a tub in the kitchen? There's no field manual for finding the right home. But when you do, USAA Homeowners Insurance can help protect it the right way. Restrictions apply. This episode is brought to you by Twizzlers. Long day, late night, feeling a little bored. Twizzlers is the ultimate sidekick for any moment of the day, no matter what kind of day you're having. The perfect level of sweet and a fun excuse to sit back and relax. Unwind with Twizzlers. To buy now, visit Hersheyland.com slash Twizzlers. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the latest episode of All Too Real 2. My name is Michael E. Cullen II, and with me, as always, is... Sesame Honey Dip and Carta. Honey Dip. Okay. Yep. That's your name? Yep. It is. Why is your name Honey Dip? I don't know. I just thought it sounded cool. Because, like, I heard this woman named Queen Latifah. I'm not oh. sure, you know, I'm not sure if she's, like, a queen of a country... <clears throat> but she's living in America. I, I'm not really sure. But oh wait, is she, she that lady? A... Is she that equalizer lady? Yeah, it's the equal. Yeah, it's the equalizer lady. But she's also a queen. I guess of a country. I'm not, I'm not really sure. But uh, uh, she said she was a honey dip in a in a movie from 2002, and I thought it was kind of neat. So I decided I was going to change my name to Honey to Dip. Sesame Honey Dip. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not really sure what that means, but okay. I, 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 I'm very confused about that, but it's, it sounds kind of sexual to me. It does. I was wondering, yeah, there was, there's definitely some kind of, um, yeah, seemed like a euphemism. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure, mm-hmm. but, and also, um, this is probably the second time or the second movie, perhaps even the third movie actually that we reviewed where bestiality is heavily implied. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love it. Yep. Gotta love it. A lot of no. And at least two no. of them have been Disney movies. So, um, yeah, maybe, maybe the right wing. I was going to say, maybe the right wing are onto about. something here. So. Yes. <laughs> oh, Lord. Um, Lord. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, today on our wonderful show, mm. we are covering the 2002 cinematic masterpiece. The film that changed cinema forever. <laughs> Disney's The Country Bears. Yep. Yep. So okay. uh, the uh, really quick, the uh, synopsis here on uh, the United Movie Database is Barry Barrington goes on an adventure to save Country Bear Hall by getting the Country Bears back together for a reunion concert. Yep. So this movie, yeah. it was uh, directed by Peter Hastings. Peter is known for being a uh, producer on a bunch of animated stuff from like Tiny Toons, uh, Animaniacs, Pinky and the Brain, Lilo and Stitch, the series, um, Kung Fu Panda, the Dragon Knight TV series. Um, yeah. As far as directing goes, he's got... Um, this mission space which i think is a yeah it's a five it's i think it's part of a ride at disneyland or disney world so <laughs> a short film called hard enough and in pre-production right now for a movie called dog man which <laughs> is a dog the... man which which uh, sounds like a great film here it's um dog man half dog half man he is sworn to protect and serve as he doggedly pursues the feline supervillain Petey the cat. Oh my fucking god. Uh <clears throat> it sounds it sounds like a great <laughs> you know, great film. This was oh, ri- it does sound like Citizen. Yeah. The Citizen Kane of uh dog movies. Um Mark Perez wrote this movie. 
He is known as the writer of Herbie Fully Loaded. He wrote the movie Accepted with Justin Long and uh, Jonah Hill, which I actually really liked. Um, he wrote the movie Game Night, which I haven't seen yet. Um, yeah, this was one of his early films. But yeah, he wrote a TV movie called The Back Nine. Yeah, so um, we got that. And the movie stars a bunch of people. The first and most important person we need to talk about is Christopher Walken <laughs> as Reed Thimple, a banker. Okay. These are going to be all the first I'm going to go through all the live action actors. <laughs> We've got uh, Stephen Tobolowsky as Norbert Barrington, Barry's uh, adoptive father. We got Daryl Chill Mitchell as Officer Ham, an inept police officer. M.C. Ganey as Rhodey, the bus driver for the Country Bears, and he's also their drummer, so they're not all bears. So, yeah. Anyways, um, no. Dietrich Bader as Officer Cheats, another inept uh, police officer who wears a fake mustache. <laughs> Alex Rocco as Rip Holland, a f the former <laughs> promoter of the Country Bears. Alex Rocco, a uh, famous Baha'i who's passed away. Yeah, yeah. Um, Megan Fay as Allison... Barrington, uh, Barry's excitable yet easily worried adoptive mother. She also played uh, Jonah's mother on uh, Superstore. Um, <laughs> we've got uh, Eli Martinthal as uh, Dexter Dex, Dex Barrington, Barry's adoptive older brother. He yeah. also played um, the younger Stifler boy in American Pie 1 and 2. Wow. Yeah, so Stifler's little brother. <laughs> And, um, yeah, which was nice. then replaced when they finally made um, Band Camp by another actor. Um, go go back like six years for our, our review of Band Camp. Yes, it's one of the greatest reviews ever. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> Jennifer Page, a singer as a waitress. Um, Jess Harnell, who, um, it's weird, he doesn't do any voice work in this movie, but he's most known as a voiceover artist. He's Wacko okay. Warner in the uh, Animaniacs, among others. Um, he's just probably one of the most well-known voiceover artists ever. But he plays a long-haired dude, one of the Bears fans, who was later seen with Dex in the audience at the end of the film. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I remember seeing that guy. So we've, we've also got a bunch of cameos. We've got the singer Crystal. We've got Don Henley as himself. We've got John Hyatt as himself. we got Wyclef Jean as himself. we got Sir Elton John as himself. Queen Latifah as herself, as well as Cha-Cha, the manager of a, the Swarming Hive Honey Bar restaurant. Um, Willie Nelson as himself, <laughs> Bonnie Raitt as herself, Brian Setzer as himself, Don Was as himself, mm -hmm. Exhibit as himself. And now we come to the voice <laughs> cast here. We've got Haley Joel Osment as Barry Barrington, with Elizabeth Daly as his singing voice, also known as E.G. E. Daly. Um, now we've got an interesting little voice person here okay dietrich bader who plays one of the cops is also the voice of ted betterhead the lead vocalist of the band eh. so he has two roles in this movie john hyatt does his singing wow. though um we got candy ford as trixie sinclair um her singing is done by bonnie Raitt. um james gammon as big al the sluggish elderly property caretaker for the country bear hall um he's a uh, James Gammon, people may know as the uh, the manager of the Indians in the um, in the uh, major league movies. Um, hey. We got Brad Garrett as Fred Betterhead, a harmonica playing uh, bassist of the band. Um, we have Toby Huss as Tennessee O'Neill, the one string guitar player. Um, hey. Yeah, his uh, I can't. Um, oh yeah, Don Henley does his singing voice. Uh, we've got Kevin Michael Richardson as Henry Dixon Taylor, the MC and manager of the Country Bears. And then we have um, Stephen Root, who everybody knows from news radio and office space, among other things, as Zeb Zuber, the fiddle player for the Country Bears. And he's the only one of the voice actors that does their own singing. So <laughs> the song he sings, I was just like listening to it and I was like, is that actually him? And it was Stephen Root. I was impressed. But anyways, that's our main cast here. So, yeah. So, initial thoughts, reaction, whatever you want to call it to this here, Sesame? Oh, uh, man. Uh, I just thought it was bizarre. This movie, it felt like 
<clears throat> there was like two different genres going on <clears throat> and then they tried to sort of meld them together but they they still ended up being like separate from each other so it was just like having two of them going on side by side uh 2002 was a very interesting time for particularly these type of movies i remember a lot of these kind of movies coming out around 2000 to like 2002 yeah but none none quite as bizarre as this one yeah it's not too many like this um yeah so um yeah i uh i think it's the greatest film that's ever been produced um <laughs> i um well there you go i i seriously think it's better than citizen kane and um oh wow um it's it, it it's it's better than casablanca it's better than um gone with the wind or uh or the Wizard of Oz or any of those movies, you know, Shit. like any movie you've ever yeah. seen, you know, it's, it's better than the latest Deadpool and Wolverine movie. It's, it's better than. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I still want to see that, man. I haven't seen yeah. it yet. Um, um, it, it's, 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 be really it's, it's better than every MCU film. It's, um, <laughs> okay. Wow. And, uh, I'm lying. <laughs> This is quite possibly no, one not. of the strangest movies I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> you talk about Deadpool or this one? This one. Uh, oh yeah, no, it's 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 uh actually this would have been cool if it wasn't the MCU, but like one of the weird universes like in the multiverse, <laughs> like when Doctor Strange when this... they went to like a paint universe, there was one that was like everyone was like floating. Then they should have gone to the country bear universe. Where, this has got almost speaking of like Christopher... speaking of Marvel, it's got kind of a, a Howard the Duck sort of feel to it. Um Yeah. So where you've got people in costumes that are animatronically controlled, with the exception of the fact that the costumes here are a lot better than the one in Howard the Duck. Um Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. of course. I mean um I kinda... This the, another these, bizarre movie. Yeah. The, these creatures were all created by uh, the Jim Henson Creature Shop, so that tells you that they, you know, know what they're doing. I mean, the same people that did the turtles for the first two live action Ninja Turtle movies. So you know, as well as plastics. Yeah, Six. as well as all their other things. Speaking of Jim Henson, the plot of this movie is very similar to the 2011 Muppet movie. <laughs> So, the Muppets. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm. Yeah, I don't know if you've seen that. Um, no, I don't think. Well, no, no, no. I, I, I think I did when it came. Yeah, out. it's very similar plot. There's a, uh, the there, there's like a theater or a, or in this case a hall that um, a big bad guy wants to destroy for some reason, and they need to raise money, and the only way to do it is get the band back together, and Which... and, and, and there's okay. there's an outsider who happens to be. In this case, a bear, and in that movie, a Muppet who lives with a human family <laughs> and travels across the country and meets his heroes and then helps get the band back together. Yep. It's the same plot. <laughs> Ripped it off. Yeah, they just literally took nine years later. Yeah. <laughs> they just were like... But oh, then again, sorry, it, me, it, it's, it's, it, it's, it's your similar plot, like, you know, um, I think, uh, like, Judy Garland and, and without without the getting the band back together, but like you know, oh no, we're gonna lose the whatever. We gotta we're we're gonna put on a show and save it, you know, sort of thing. I think like Judy Garland and Mickey Rooney had movies like that back in the day. So you know, it's like oh yeah, there's there's like I probably seen it's, like it's a, a dozen it's of these a trope. Of um, you know, I mean, I I think like that that animated Sing movie similar and stuff and everything, but uh, so. What goes down in this uh, bizarre world of bears and humans living, so, like coexisting, and no one mentioning the fact that they do really? Yeah, it's one of those movies where they just accept the rules of that universe, where it's just, it's just like, yeah, I don't know, I don't know, because it's weird though, because sometimes that see that kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier about how I felt like there was like two genres competing with each other about what this movie actually was because like at one point it seemed like they didn't even know that barry was actually a bear like like the cops at least like i don't know it, that's it's like they the don't act like anything's get weird yeah. about barry it, it, it's, it's a very strange yeah, movie too with the fact that you know what the first line of actual spoken dialogue in the movie is 
I forgot. No, Barry turned. B- Barry's sitting there, and he's like, "Mom, am I adopted?" <laughs> oh, right. That was after the intro. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah, he's like, it, it's the yeah. first. It's the first spoken like, dialogue in the movie. <laughs> it's like because the other part's song. So, so with so. that, yeah. So with that, I was thinking, okay, you know, the parents, you know, they don't want them to feel, you know, self conscious, you know, so they're kind of dodging the question. Whereas his older brother is like, you know, being a fucking piece of shit so he's like mm-hmm. oh, of course don't look at yourself but then like but then like other people in the movie were then acting like they didn't even know he was a bear so it's like all right so what's going on here then? yeah like, I, I didn't know if have... that was the if that was just the fact that the cops are like supposed to be inept you know cops or if it's or if that's just a common thing like people just don't comment on the fact that bears and humans are living in harmony um yeah I mean, it could have been that, or yeah, like you said, the cops just could have been stupid, like, cause they kind of did play that role, <clears throat> and, you know, they were, I don't know, who knows, the, the, the movie does have one thing I absolutely hate, <clears throat> when they anthropomorphize animals with human characteristics, like, yeah. I'm fine with, like, talking, <clears throat> you know, like, things like that, but I hate it <clears throat> when they have animals do move like humans, like arms and legs. Like, no, like let them let them walk like they're supposed to, or let them move the way that the animal is actually supposed to move. Like don't like don't have a fish standing on its hind gills or whatever and walk. Yeah. Like, come on, like don't do that. I mean, like, that, that, it's totally like, it's them, totally a cartoon thing though. I mean, you've got like you know like Yogi Bear walks on his on his hind legs and walks around, and you know bears can walk on their hind legs and they do, but it's still yeah. yeah not if they don't do it like the whole time no and it, it, yeah and their feet don't look like human feet and, and they don't walk like humans they don't are, talk like human are, are you fine with them dressing yeah. like humans that's fine yeah that's okay uh <laughs> yeah you can you can you can dress however you want that's not the problem because sometimes people dress animals and shit it's not a big deal but like <laughs> i don't know it's just like with, well, even with the cartoons like yogi Bear, i didn't like that either but like with cartoons you can at least do something with it because you're drawing it, you know. But like when you have a yeah. person in a costume, I mean, we, animatronic. We, we should probably talk about the fact before we get too deep in the plot that this is based on the attraction, the Country Bear Jamboree at that was at <laughs> Disneyland and Disney World. Have you ever been to either? No, I I know. I know what you're talking about, though. Yeah, this is what it's based on. I, I I went to the Country Bear Jamboree at Disney World when I was a kid. They've recently, and this was what made me think of this movie because I read an article. Um, they just opened in um, earlier this, like, like, and I think in July or something of this year, they opened uh, a new version of the Country Bear Jamboree, um, retitled the uh, Country Bear Musical Jamboree at Magic Kingdom. And um, it's uh, still in the same theater, but they like redressed a lot of the bears. They changed the music out a lot of it where now they're singing song instead of singing like standard country songs and random stuff that they used to sing. Now they're singing like Disney songs. I've watched some video of it. There's there's mixed reviews for it. Um, You know, of course, of course, nobody ever wants change because like anytime something changes in the world, that means that the world is like going to explode and your childhood is going to be ruined. And um, yeah, but (laughs) I love that, too. I I always love when people like, oh, childhood ruined. It's like, really? Like how? Like, it's okay. whatever. Did your childhood not exist now because they, you know, remade your favorite movie or because, you know, Indiana Jones went to get some crystal skulls and now you hate the world. Um, but anyway, so the, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, um, uh, but, but, but yeah, but the, the new one, it's basically, they're singing like songs from different Pixar and Disney movies. Like, you know, like, I don't know, like a whole new world and shit like that. So, yeah. <laughs> so. Oh boy. <clears throat> so, so yeah, that, that kind of made sense because I kind of had these vague, memories of like seeing clips of this you know or sometimes they play it like whatever yeah. you sometimes yeah it's basically they're they're, they're they're kind like, of they're, they're 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 animatronics similar in style to uh like i guess chuck e cheese and stuff but th- th- this basically inspired the creation of like um showbiz pizza and chuck e cheese pizza and stuff so um 
different people that went to Disney World and they're like, we can do this on a cheaper level and put it in restaurants, you know? So, of course, these audio animatronics are a lot more sophisticated at Disney than they are when you go see those scary things that, that used to be at Chuck E. Cheese, you know? So. Yeah, I thought the fucking pizza rat. <clears throat> Yeah. I just love the fact that his mascot is a rat. Well, he was supposed to be a coyote. Sp- supposed to be a coyote, but they realized that they oh, bought yeah. a rat costume instead of a co- coyote one, and so they just went with it. So, um... They just went with it. Like, yeah. Like, um, yeah. But anyway, so this movie is basically about this band called the Country Bears. They used to be a really huge country rock band back you know, yeah. in the 80s or maybe 70s. The way the, way the movie portrays them is like they're bigger than the Beatles or something, you know? So. Yeah, like they're supposed to be like absolutely huge. Like, and they broke up at some point. And for some reason, they played all of their shows in like the Country Bear Cabin type uh, uh, it's, place. It's which the Country didn't... Bear Hall, but I don't think they played all their shows there because they the one at the beginning was in a completely different place. It oh, was, I see. It, yeah. it, it, so... it was obviously like a. Uh, I think the Country Bear Hall was like their like their main stage, like that they would play, like kind of like they probably have like, you know, they'd play there more often than, but then they'd go on tour because otherwise they wouldn't have a bus. Right. I mean, that kind of makes sense because like Metallica, they. They kind of really started off in San Francisco, mm-hmm. like that's when they really started popping off. Because like they were in LA yeah. for a while, and they didn't really like the LA scene, so they moved to San Francisco, and they pretty much like played most of their shows like in one particular theater. Like that's yeah, and, they and, started, and, like, and if you get like really famous, you know, you get to that point in your career where you're just doing that Vegas shows, you know, like Elvis or Celine Dion or something, you know. But, <laughs> but hey, man, that's actually kind of cool because you know you don't have to tour, you don't have yeah. to. You know, you play bring, and then you, you can go bring back your family with you, you and yeah. Well, and you get to gamble off your money on the casino and lose everything. Then then you have to keep performing because now you got to make the money to pay the debts to your bookies and to the mm-hmm. house, you know, and things of that nature. And, you know, get your knees broken. If and you then know, eventually you get hooked on up. hooked on drugs and die on the toilet, and then it's all good, you know. Right. Wait. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what? I don't know. Just say, anyway, sorry. <laughs> so they're like this big band. <clears throat> None of them were rich for some reason, which, okay, that's, they never really explained why all of them are like broke, even though like they were like this huge, super successful band. They should have done something like that. Like, oh, they all, they like got on drugs and they blew all their money on hookers or whatever. Well, it's Disney, so they couldn't say that. But like, they, they all got, hooked, know, they got, they all got hooked on the honey and, uh, yeah. on the honey. Yeah. <laughs> Like, they kept making points about that. Like, ooh. Anyway, so I'm not going to, I'm like jumping ahead. But like, so basically they broke up. There's like this, Barry is like the main, he's like a kid. <clears throat> he's obsessed with this band. He's got like a whole collage, you know, like in his journal or whatever. He like knows like everything about him, like their whole history, whatnot. If if I were and his so, parents, I would have put him in therapy a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean that's a good point. I would have done, yeah, I would have done that too. It's like, okay, dude, like it's okay to like you could, you could, because that's the other thing too. Because later on in the movie, we find out that he wrote like a book report on them, and the teacher even wrote like, "Is there anything else to talk about besides the country bears?" Yeah, and, and then they, they, like show, they show that he did a he he made like a little uh, like um, model of the country bear hall as well, and the same thing was written on it from the teacher. So. Oh. It's right because he cause the teacher gave him an A plus for the for the yeah. work, but they're like, "Hey, man, like, let's how about so, you, you know, expand your horizon?" But like, so, so I, I just want to remind people again that these are anthropomorphic bears just living with humans. I, I the whole time I'm watching the movie, that's all I'm thinking. <laughs> like, the fuck? Nobody bears an eye. They're just it's it's there. It's like kind of like the <clears throat> the corny verse, you know the yeah the the. You know, the CS, you know, you know, the CCU, you know, like yeah. the corny cinematic universe. Like people just accept that corny or Capricorn lives with them. Given name. Same thing here. Yeah. <laughs> They're just like, yeah, it totally makes sense that he came from the planet Zarkon and then he came here to teach children street smarts, even though he's the one that's constantly getting kidnapped all the time. But that's another thing. But like, yeah, but like here, yeah. here we've just got. But it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of bears, though. It's like it just seems like there's just random ones, and most of them are connected somehow to the country bears. Like it's just weird. But yeah, well, you're right. That's the thing. 
I don't think there are. Yeah, I think every single one of them. So maybe <laughs> they're like just weird freak of nature where. But it, it's, it's like reason, e- even even in the crowd of their shows, it's like all humans. It's not like. So that's what makes this movie even more bizarre. So now we have established that there are anthropomorphic bears and they're musicians <clears throat> and people tend to really love them. But they're the only anthropomorphic bears al- alive and they all happen to be musicians. Yeah some reason or 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 or, or people that run the hall or you know friends of them or or a random boy that's adopted by a human family (laughs) and then there's no yeah there's no so that's the other thing so is one of those bears the parents of of barry didn't even go there i was thinking oh maybe maybe you know one of them left them or you know lost them or whatever and then that have been too too deep for this movie (laughs) no then they they, of course they did like no who cares we're not even gonna we're not even gonna do that but anyway, so basically he, <clears throat> his older brother is a piece of shit and is always like telling him he doesn't belong there and stuff like that. Yeah. He's not really part of the family. You know, typical, you know, well, I'm not going to be mean here, but like later on in his, <clears throat> in their bedroom, because they, they, they sleep on different sides of the bedroom, of course, yeah. Barry's got all these posters for the country bears <clears throat> his older brother has like three or four lint biscuit posters and a nine inch wall. and a nine inch nails all writing piece of shit. in nine inch nails yeah and cold and it's like okay like again it's just like whoever made this movie didn't understand genres like yeah. lint biscuit is new metal cold <clears throat> would sort of be considered new metal even though they're not but then suddenly we got nine inch nails. And it's just like, um, yeah, but okay, I, I like mean, those... people like different things. Not him. No, not him. <laughs> um, I, I've made the decision that him. <laughs> I know people do, but he's like, He's not a person in my book, so yeah, I mean, yeah, because um, I, I mean, when, when I was a kid, I would listen to like, like Billy Joel, and then you know, pop in like uh, Nine Inch Nails after it. You know, it's not like, you know what I mean? It's like... But you're a unique person. Come on, you used to watch the fucking Bob Newhart show when you were like eight. Like it's not like normal. You know what I mean? Like, like. That there's was nothing, like an adult show. There's know, nothing like, wrong with it. Rest in peace, Bob. But I'm um, yeah. wrong to say that. Like, it's not the norm for an eight year old to watch the Bob Newhart show. Uh, I like know, Dick Van but, Dyke, hey, too. I liked Mary Tyler Moore. I liked uh, all those. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but that's not the norm. And with this kid, anyway, he, he basically like practically forces barry to run away because of what he said <laughs> and so barry <clears throat> eventually finds the country club or what the club or whatever the hall country bear and hall <clears throat> yeah finds, yeah the country bear hall finds out that they're pretty much struggling financially you know very hard and and they can't they're six years be- okay that's another thing right there okay really six years you haven't made a single payment i can understand In six years like not being able I, I can, but you're telling me you haven't made one payment in six years. Come on, like, and, and all they no, owe is like, twenty thousand dollars. That was the other thing too. I'm like, wait, twenty thousand dollars for six years? That's not a lot of money. Like, uh, yeah, I mean, that would be. I would think like a hundred thousand. That'd be like twenty thousand divided by six equals. That'd be like, oh, I just did times. Oops. <laughs> well, you'd be divided. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, twenty thousand divided by six would be that like, would be like um, three thousand three hundred thirty-three a year. So which, you're telling me? But I mean, I mean, in, this is like twenty some years ago, but still, it's like <laughs> it still doesn't matter. It, it's like it's just ridiculous. So I was like, what were they doing all that time? Like where they couldn't make any money? Who cares? I don't care. But like, so yeah, Barry that'd be two hundred seventy-seven dollars a month. Yeah, I mean, really? Like, come on, and. <laughs> And for some reason, the bank just let them, probably because they liked the country bear so much that they were just like, well, you know, we'll, we'll let them take advantage of our kindness because we really like them. And then they'll just not pay us what they owe us because, you know, whatever. And then so Barry shows up and right at the same, right around the same time. Uh, oh, they got this weird thing too. Like they thought would be like a funny, funny bit to like keep throw around the movie like 10 times where like, one of the bears is like weirdly obsessed with grass for some reason. Like, I don't know why they thought that'd be like a funny thing to 
to add to the movie, but that's what they did. Yeah, not, not, not and, to get not to get too too hung up on this uh on this twenty thousand dollar thing. So so that would be like okay, so it was like two hundred and seventy two dollars a month. The average rent in the United States at that time was like six hundred dollars. Exactly, exactly. I mean, I mean, it's like, but, dude, I mean, it might have been a lot less in like smaller towns like this, but I'm just saying that. But that's like rent for like a one or two bedroom apartment. Yeah, not a hall. <laughs> Yeah, not a, yeah, not a fucking concert hall. With by the way, <clears throat> we're not just talking about <clears throat> the actual structure. We're talking about the land as well. Uh, so that's a lot of land that they bought, and so add that and the house or the hall, and we're only talking two seventy two a month. And you can't swing that. I don't know what to tell you, man. Like that's <clears throat> at this point, maybe Christopher Lockett's character is on the right to just try to tear this place down. Because I know. Like, if you can't swing that and you don't have yeah. the the willpower to swing that, that you're not going to do anything that it yeah, takes in order to keep that place, then you're just going to be like, oh, well, I, I won't pay for something. I know we're hanging up on this part of it. It's yeah. a stupid part of the plot. Because I would say... A hundred thousand or like two hundred, like some enormous. Yeah. I, I would have made it like a, an outrageous world. number, but twenty thousand. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> it's stupid, and so that part's stupid. The grass part is stupid. I don't know. They they went back to this grass thing like five or ten times. Yeah. Like, okay, we get it. That bear's obsessed with grass. Like, why why are we turn this into a bit like where we're just going to keep doing a callback? Because at one point when the cops show up, the the inept ones. The the one the one with the mustache is like, oh, is that Kentucky blah 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 or whatever? And then the bear's like, oh, yes it is. <laughs> like like, oh, he's so happy that someone else has finally like shared his like passion for grass. And I'm like, okay, like can we stop this? Like can we move like we move on, like May- maybe it? like can we Maybe it was just like a non a double entendre for like grass being like you know weed oh. and uh you know yeah yeah it could be the guy did always sound like he was stoned like he was very slow and like you like we could do that and you know yeah. stuff like that and uh, what point so Christopher Walken shows up he he got some weird name I don't know <laughs> and then he's like he's obsessed with tearing this place down like he's like got like a weird. On his car, he even has like a demolition, yeah, like Reed, ornament. On Reed his car. Fimple, like, yeah, that's right. Reed yeah, Fimple, what a weird name. <laughs> and the way he says bear is like bears. I, I can't yeah. even do it. Like bear, ba- it's ba- like, bear, bear, something like. It's like ba- bear, fire. Yeah, it's like, like weird. He, he like adds a Y yeah. to it or something. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's what he does. The walking. He's got his own voice, but like he, he's like hell bent and. Tearing this place down. We don't know. We'll find out why later in the movie. But right now, we don't really know what it is. And then, like, like there's a scene where, like, he literally has, like, a <clears throat> like a wrecking ball type of thing above his office desk for some reason. And, and, and he has and several, then... several models of the Country Bear Hall that he just lets it drop onto. And, and in the scene, which is, in my opinion, the greatest scene in the history of cinema... <laughs> Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. Christopher Walken just going, oh no, oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> He's doing it over and over again, like five different times. It's just like, okay, this guy is so obsessed that he has like five of these models made up <laughs> just so he, he could crush them. Dude, like, talk about like, you got some prop, like, you need to go see a therapist, man. Like, yeah, I mean, you, you, like, you... no, no money. About- in the world's guy. I mean, the the five of those had to cl- cost cl- close to like what the the money that the bears owed you. I mean, I'm just saying, if you're worried about exactly, twenty thousand gotta... dollars and you're building all these models that probably cost you know maybe at least a hundred each, so you probably have more than the five. I'm assuming that you know. I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, you're right though. I mean, exactly. It's just so stupid and so like. Basically, Barry has this like this brilliant idea that apparently no one else has ever thought of. Where it's like, oh, well, <clears throat> why don't you just get the band back together and then play a reunion concert? And then that's going to rate really $20,000. Think about that first. How many people would need to show up and pay for a ticket? Like, yeah. Yeah, I in don't a know. Hall, like, <laughs> in a hall. We're not talking about like a stadium. We're talking about so, a fucking so like a, concert hall. Like, what would you say? You know, like, so so I guess, well, I guess, you know, if, if, if you're you're trying to pay for... You know, see, see, I mean, I mean, I don't know what it seats. Like, what would you say that that hall seats? Probably like, uh, I don't know, th- 
three hundred, maybe. Well, that's the thing. At, at first, when they showed it, when there was actually that's the other thing too. There were seats originally, but then during the concert, the seats were gone. So I don't yeah. know they just moved them. And then I would say at most <clears throat> that would hold like a hundred people safely uh, without like a fire hazard or something. So like, really? So how? So how expensive are tickets? So. Twenty thousand divided. No, I can't, I can't do it right now. Twenty thousand divided by hundred. Twenty thousand like... <laughs> divided by, we'll say a hundred. That's it's like two hundred dollars a ticket. Exactly. Really? <laughs> Come on. And then for a show that's like that's being promoted for like two days or four days before. It well, even... maybe a fit this more people. Maybe a fit more people than we were imagining. I don't know. Maybe it was like closer Fine. to like three hundred. I don't know, but. <laughs> Okay, but this is this is 2002, right? So this is pre, like the moment you look at your phone, you can find anything. Like four days in 2002 to promote a concert. Yeah, that's kind of a very that's a stretch. And so anyway, so <clears throat> they're like, fine, like maybe he's got a point. Maybe we should get the band back together. So one of the guys, I think it was Henry, he's like one of the main main bears. Uh, he calls well, up. He, like he's their like their, old... he's their he's their like uh the 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 guy that announces them at the he 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 runs he he's he's the caretaker of the hall basically. So yeah. Oh right, yeah. So he's yeah. like he, yeah, he knows what he And so so he calls up like oh yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say we we have our first bear that we meet of the of the actual bears after they after they go off on their old uh tour bus which uh was collecting dust, um, is yeah. uh Fred Betterhead. Again, that name, Betterhead. I mean, it's B E D D E R, but still, it sounds like better head. Um, yeah, yeah, yep, yeah. So, uh, uh yep, yeah, he, he's a he's a he's an, a harmonica and electric bass player, but f- the first he's working as a security guard on the set of pop singer Crystal in her cameo. I guess she was. She had like Superwoman was her one hit song that she had back in the day. I don't remember that song at all, but she's pretty good though. Yeah, I mean, so she had this little. She was gonna be filming a uh, a um, music video there, and then she Fred drops his harmonica somehow, and she picks it up and sees his name on it, and is like, "Oh, you're Fred Betterhead." How would she not know that? I know. Like, if she was such a fan, you know how I mean? she'd not know? I mean, I mean, like, I'm a big fan of. Counting Crows, I guess, you know, maybe if it was somebody other than Adam Duritz of Counting Crows, I probably wouldn't recognize them if they were being a security guard at my music video. But, you know, so right. it's like, I don't true. know. I guess that's true. Yeah. But, like, how do you not recognize? That's the other thing, too, is a lot of people. So maybe maybe in this universe, too, they don't really recognize, like, bare faces that well because they're not human. But when you think it's weird yeah, that, you're, uh, that, that, that your security guard's a bear and there doesn't seem to be a lot of other bears around... <laughs> No, they don't care. I just want to say this universe is full of psychotic people who <laughs> so like weird. just they see something that's completely abnormal and like they I'm not saying that you should judge or or hate someone that's different, but at least you should notice it. Like, you know, like... at least clock it. I mean, you're just like, you know, like if, 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 if I walked into a Walmart and all of a sudden a bear was just, you know, down the cereal, cereal right. aisle buying some, you know, sugar crisp cereal or something, you know, I would kind of look at it weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just saying. No, exactly. I mean, I'm just saying like, yeah. you, like to not have any discriminatory, um, <clears throat> Uh, abilities that a human being would die like within two weeks or like two hours really yeah of just like oh i wonder what this um little reptile creature that's hissing angry at me i think i'm just gonna go try to pet it like and yeah. it's a cobra <laughs> like, well, like if you, you see if you see a spider is- in your house that you've never seen like i saw a weird spider the other day not here but at my dad's house that was like like brown and had some weird colors on it and i'm like i don't know if that's poisonous i don't know what the fuck it is you know? so it's like yeah, yeah i would i would not fuck around with that thing yeah i'll be like i'm gonna either kill you or i'm gonna like pick you up safely and throw you out of the yeah, house or whatever. exactly like, so, and so it's like none of these people universe like they like they're they're just not smart people like it's you know so I guess I guess I mean I guess the thing is it's just bears and humans living side by side but it also begs the question, are they the only animals in this world? <laughs> I'm just hung up on this. <laughs> like, why Why that are there? Fine. Because, it's, like, it's... like they, have a, they have a pet chicken, and that's fine because, you know, it's, and it's a regular chicken. It's not like a chicken that's sitting there talking to people. 
<laughs> no, no, it's it's yeah, this one's not anthropomorphic. Yeah, so it's like so what other yeah, exactly. So now we can now we need to know are, are there you know talking fish? They they are they, there they, they say at one chickens? time that like, Trix, Trixie left Tennessee for a panda. And um so, that's right. So, so, well, so, so there was racism in this movie. There's yeah. bare racism. Yes. That's right. They're being racist against pandas. So I think there that was, was like that that, no. that that was basically okay, so so this is this goes back to the Cold War and because a lot of pandas are from <laughs> China and um no so, yeah. <laughs> Exactly. So it this movie is anti communist. The... I mean, yeah, I think so. I mean because <laughs> at one point they say like, oh, how come how come pandas have everything? I was like, oh boy. Like <laughs> you know, like we got bearism. We got actual bearism in this in this movie. Maybe they were trying to teach kids not to be racers by doing that. I don't know. But like and who knows? Anyway, uh so um so yeah, I'm just getting on up on all these like side points. Like we barely even talked about the movie yet. Yeah, we We're just like we 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 we've, we've things, barely like the... we've barely have <laughs> no. no we're just like talking about the twenty thousand dollars like the currency value back then. I know like that. Like, so oh god, this so, um, movie is a fucking uh, fever dream, man. It's like fucking weird. It, oh god, and so um so yeah, she she's like, oh, can you play the harmonica? So then he plays the harmonica with the, her band, and then um. And then he calls up the, um, or no, he's the first one they, they recruit. Yeah, they, they, they find, and, and they out. find him and then he goes and calls, he calls, he, he makes a call to, uh, Tennessee, I think is the next, next, yeah, oh no, no, uh, no, Zeb Zuber they're looking for next. Oh yes. Right. And, and he's, uh, he's been, he's, he's basically, he's been spending years drinking honey at this mm -hmm. bar run by Queen Latifah, who he calls Cha-Cha. And, um. <laughs> Sure. And that, then there's this very weird thing where there's this like automatic like bear scratch and post that vibrates up and down. Yes. It was very kind of sexual and weird in there in that bar. <clears throat> That's the other thing too. So I, I know I keep getting on up at this point, but how many anthropomorphic bears are there in the world that we haven't seen any that warrants getting <laughs> something know. just so that she didn't buy that just for him? I guess so. <laughs> like, but he owes because her like he five, owes her five hundred bucks. So I, I don't know. Why was she then buying them? Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like it's like if you if you I mean if there's a corner carry out and there's only one dude who buys Pepsi, they're not going to carry Pepsi. You know, it's just the way it works. Yeah, we're not going to have like a whole aisle of just Pepsi products because one guy yeah <laughs> drinks Pepsi. Sorry, it's not how businesses work. Yeah, but like and. And so they have this idea. Well, well the kid uh, Barry has this idea where she, he goes up to her. He's like, "Hey, you know, how about this? Like, how about he plays the fiddle against your house band? And if he wins, then he doesn't have to pay you any money anymore. But if he loses, you get to keep the tour bus." And like he just did this on his, he just made this deal on yeah, his own without talking to the owners so, of the tour bus. So, so that's kind of like a shitty move on Barry's. But he's a kid, so he kind of comes with slack on that. But yeah. like. It's so like yeah, at he's just first, a, he's like, a small cub. He's good. Oh, yeah, but... yeah. At first, he sounds like shit, and they're like, "Oh, and by the way, Brian Setzer was like the house band." Yeah. Um, <laughs> and it was like, "What the fuck are we watching?" Like Brian <laughs> Setzer is like there, who's trying to play the fiddle, but it's not doing it well at all. He actually sounds horrible at first, and they're like, "Oh well." And then they know, then they have this, this to... song, and Zeb Zuber is. Uh... Is is voiced by Stephen Root, and he does his own singing, All and right, he sounded well. really good. <laughs> I was like, "What the fuck?" Steve, I mean, Stephen Root can do anything. That's all I'm gonna say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's my hero. Well, at least the, you know, at least the country bears aren't your heroes. So, but he's you know. he's basically he, he's he's an enigma, an enigma. <laughs> What it? Wait, what? What's that from? No, I, I know it, it's from right. it's from news radio. An enigma, an enigma wrapped. Uh, oh, what is it? Uh. Oh shit! Oh, Enigma wrapped in a is it a mystery oh. smothered in secret sauce or something like that? Yeah. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah that's but yeah, that, that's yeah, Jimmy that James. That... Yeah, Jimmy James. Jimmy James. Yeah, yeah, Jimmy James. Like yeah. This is a weird name. Do you get it, Jimmy James? Yeah, he, he was named. He, like the same. Name. He he was named after a Beastie Boys song. Even though he was older than than uh, 
No, but I'm Beastie saying, Boys no, no the character was named after a Beastie Boys song. Oh, the character yeah. type. Yeah. <laughs> so anyways, cool. back to Zeb Zuber. He, he, wins the, he wins the battle, so then they go off. Um, and, uh, yeah, and, and then they... Uh, they call they call um they call up um Alex Rocco's character to uh have him um promote the thing and uh yeah, we've got this like tight uh, this this one this is one scene I actually kind of found funny. He's what? like at a desk and you know it looks like he's in his like office or whatever and, and he's talking on the phone and he's like awesome I'm back baby and blah 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 and then they zoom out and you realize like he's in the he's in the middle of like an office max <laughs> and and the guy's like you're going to have to leave. <laughs> Right, it's like you can't can't he's stay. Like, oh, okay, he tried to take. Yeah, it's like that's ours. Leave that there. <laughs> it's... I like that part too. He's like, oh yeah, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> like Alex Rocco was great, man. He was a great actor. Yeah. Uh, Short-lived, really yeah. good TV series that I got to find somewhere and we can cover for this show is the famous Teddy Z with him and John Cryer. It was a good show. So yeah, oh, very cool. yeah, yeah this was pretty good. Yeah, he's like he wasn't like super famous. And like, but like he he was in a lot of stuff, and like mm-hmm. like sort like even like that's the thing with Alex Rocco is that like <clears throat> he could sell a movie with just like like a bit part in the movie, like you didn't have to be like there's a scene I still watch sometimes, like even not in own, like not even the whole movie, um from that thing you do, yeah, <clears throat> I'm Hanks and uh, mm-hmm. a bunch of other cool people, uh he. He plays like this, like mm-hmm. owner of like this big music, like um, you know, record label or whatever. And there's like this scene where he's like talking to the press a little bit and stuff. And then he's like, "All right, let's let's go get some deli or whatever." And then, and by the way, if you see the 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 full scene, because like they cut it for the movie, but they also have an extended version where yeah. he's like literally like he goes through he goes through his whole thing where he's like telling you how to like eat deli correctly. Like here's how you you dip it in the mustard like this and. You, like I mean, it's like it's just like this beautiful moment where he's just like going for like two straight minutes, like how to properly eat deli food, and then like and he makes like this big ass turkey sandwich he's eating, and then one of the band members goes up and tries to like talk to him, and like t- Tom Hanks' character said, absolutely do not go and talk to him right now, like do not bother him, but he went ahead and did it anyway, and the guy he starts screaming like, oh, who? brought this kid over here and i'm trying to eat here and it was just like it's like a, literally like a two minute yeah. scene in that movie and i still watch that from time to time on its own just because of how perfectly it was and, executed and and rocco was also a hanger on of the winter hill gang in boston and part of the boston irish gang war of the 1960s and did a lot of criminal activity before he Wait, changed. yes are you serious <laughs> uh, no way that's fucking crazy yeah <laughs> He like attacked people and other things too. So that's that's wild, man. That's <clears throat> yeah. He was he was arrested several times. Um, this yeah. He was... was this like when he was like really young? like yeah, like, like when he was before, when, when like, he was he when he was and stuff. yeah, it was before he became Baha'i. But this is like when he was a teen and stuff. Yeah, but yeah, he was part That'd of the big, big uh, Boston Irish yeah, Gang War of the '60s, which was like a huge deal back then, where they had different gangs fighting each other. But he was part of the Winter Hill Gang, which was a really big gang. Um, yeah, that's, um, yeah, yeah, my, it's a little, little sorry, known thing stu- about him, but yeah, so, but he's still a great actor. Um, so, <laughs> and he was a good guy no, after no, that. Totally. He, he, he did his time. Yeah. He, he, um, the, he, uh, whatever. So, so anyways, they, the, you know, he's going to promote the show for them. So, um, basically, uh, then we have a scene where, which you talked about earlier, where the, uh, where officers, uh, ham and cheats, um, <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, at least it wasn't cheese and it's cheats and it just sounds like cheese. Um, but uh, you get it. Yeah. Eats, you get it. Um, get it. They. Uh, Go ahead, sir. Yeah. Um, they ask Big Al for directions to where Barry went because he tells him that basically that they took it. And because of miscommunications, the uh, officers then think that the bears, have, the bears have kidnapped Barry. Um, so Idiots. now. They go off to get uh, Tennessee O'Neill, who is now a marriage counselor. Yep. A bear is a marriage counselor. Yep. And the way he basically counsels people is by basically telling them how fucked up his life is. I actually had a counselor like this once. So, um, (laughs) oh, that's, 
That's great. Um, yeah, I, I had to request yeah. a, request a new therapist when when all he did was try to tell me about his divorce and how it was so much worse than the girlfriend that I was uh, depressed about. <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> so again, no one bats an eye. They're like a bear is a marriage counselor. Sure, yeah. Why not? And he's wearing yeah. he's wearing like a like a sweater that I would call like a Cosby sweater, I guess. Um, <laughs> But, See, this is before Cosby, you know, was bad. Everyone knew yeah. about the. <laughs> but, yeah. the but no, what I'm well, saying some is, people knew about it. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, it was, <laughs> it was, it was like one of the biggest open secrets in Hollywood. Anyways, um, oh so, yeah, Probably. Um, or New York, New York City was where he did actually most of his shows. But um, anyway, so the uh, so Tennessee O'Neill, he's a one string guitar player and he's a marriage counselor. He's a, he's reluctant to join rejoin the band because he wants to reconcile with his ex girlfriend who was also kind of part of the band, Trixie St Clair. Um, mm -hmm. so uh, she was like the band's keyboard player. So uh, Cheats and Ham are after them and they end up going through a car wash like. After a yep. after a lame car chase, um, <laughs> I, the car chase was stupid, man. <clears throat> yeah, and uh, so and and the uh, the guys go through the car wash and not like in a car though. The the, the officers are on foot going through a car wash. Um, That's very smart. Those things kill you, man. Like yeah, I oh, really wondering. those things how fast they're flipping around. I know. Shit, like they're not made for humans. Is there no <laughs> What's that? Yeah, they're not made for humans or bears or any or animal bears for that matter yeah. <laughs> um yeah. so anyways uh they go off on, on on their way and uh they stop at this motel and uh oh yeah there, there, there was like another scene i think i missed i don't was it before this where they uh they were in a they were in a restaurant and then the the the, the waitress knows their music and starts singing and there's like this big elaborate dance number in the middle of it and it was it was really kind of cool but still it was weird <laughs> So. That's the other thing too. So there's like three genres going on now. It's like it's like a musical kind of, but well, like yeah. not really because there's only two of these songs. Right, right. I mean, it's like it's like, like the oh, music. Okay. The music is both like diegetic and non diegetic, and it's like it's weird. It's strange. Yeah. So yeah. Um, and it. it and, and it's also like part of the. It's it's not like your typical like musical like rent or something where you know the people just break out into music and it makes sense to the plot of the thing. This is just random stops where somebody performs you know more like yeah, more, yeah, more like no, once yeah. or something um so the uh i just compared this movie to once and rent i i, I was like wait man like i was like for a second you said once and i was i thought maybe you meant like they did the song once i'm like no is he no. talking about the movie <laughs> yes because in the movie once the music is that really it's it, it's like it's 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 mostly diegetic where it's part of it's part of the world and it's not like people just breaking into song but <laughs> yeah. the yeah. movie was can't hold up a, a honey candle to this movie so <laughs> you know i think they should remake the movie once but with animatronic bears <laughs> yes <laughs> yes yes <laughs> They should remake every movie it, with animatronic bears. Call it, uh, <laughs> call it, uh, I, I can't think of it. <laughs> oh, man. This oh. Movie has, yeah. So, so oh, anyways, man. um, to, to speed things up here a little bit, they, uh, they, uh, yeah, yeah. they, they find Trixie in this hotel that they're randomly staying at. So, you know, what are the chances? Um, <laughs> she's performing too yeah and Yay. then she performs like a song and it does a duet with uh with with tennessee in in the lobby of the hotel or whatever and uh and then she agrees to come back and everything's all good you know and then the, their singing voices like i said before are uh are um bonnie Raitt and don henley who uh who are then sitting at the at the bar at the hotel or whatever as themselves reacting to yeah. themselves performing really and uh they said that was great and he says it's better than the eagles yeah <laughs> and i was Get like because he because he was in the eagles and i'm just like oh my god so <laughs> and, and it's like oh, oh boy <clears throat> so then then what then we got uh so trixie's on board and then they finally head out to find their last member ted betterhead they first uh um what's his name uh um what's his name henry or 
what is his name? The yeah, Henry, I think. Yeah, he he calls up uh, calls up uh, Ted and tells and, and Ted basically is like, "Fuck you, I'm not coming." Um, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <clears throat> but uh, they uh, he was the lead singer, so they kind of need him. Um, yeah, you can't have a band with the lead singer. So, <laughs> <laughs> and so they uh, they go off and and Henry lies to them and says that he's he's on board, and then. Uh, they go up to what they think is his house, which I don't know how they knew where that was. But anyway, so I'm not going to question yeah, the yeah. logic of this movie. And then they ask their, the gardener, who is Elton John. <laughs> For some reason. Yes. Sir Elton John is in this fucking movie. So, um. <laughs> yep. 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 And they, uh, he's the gardener. So they, you know, and they're walking away and somebody's like, one of them's like, that gardener kind of looked like Elton John. It's like, no, I've met Elton John. He's taller. You know, it's like. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, so he ends up he's saying that they're, that, uh, that Ted's at a wedding and, uh, yeah. So they go to the local country club where the wedding is and Ted's there and the bears are just kind of like mingling with everybody and everybody's loving them. And, uh. We find out that Ted is a wedding singer. So, oh, which I feel bad for wedding singers because they basically put them down too in this movie. So, in a lot of movies too, that's like they act like it's like, like you're not you're not a real musician because you could only mm -hmm. play weddings. I'm like, yeah, weddings party like last like a long time. Yeah, like hours. Like, I mean, no. I, <laughs> I DJ weddings, so I know. But, um, so the uh, yeah. they uh, and like to learn that, you no. Know, yeah, and uh, so then we have a have a, a a scene of assault where uh, Fred goes back to talk to uh, Ted. They're brothers, by the way, because they're both named Betterhead. I don't know if they made that yep. clear, but um, <laughs> Ted and Fred I mean, I Betterhead. Assume, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> they uh, in a lot of these names. I'm pretty sure most of these names are actually the names of the characters in the Country Bear Jamboree. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. So, um, they, uh, they basically, Fred punches Ted and they basically kidnap him. <laughs> yep. So, so there's assault and kidnapping. Yep. Not to mention the fact that they've and been traveling also, around, around the country, I guess, with a, with a minor, but, uh, with a delay. Yeah. So, uh... <laughs> and, and a chicken. And, um, so the, it... so they, they learned that he's only a wedding singer and that he also does children's birthday parties and shit like that and make fun of him for it basically um <clears throat> that rich and uh ted says that the real problem was zeb's drinking that you know he says that he he claims that he was the only one holding them together and that zeb's drinking is what broke him apart or something and they say drinking oh, honey man but but i i mean i'm assuming they mean honey but they should have said drinking of honey because all of a sudden now it becomes that he's an alcoholic um yeah well he's a honey you know yeah and so a honeyholic you know. um and so uh Tennessee um has an emotional an emotional outburst and uh you know Fred has, is immature and that's what what they say he says broke up the band and uh and then Barry tries to remind him that they claimed that in in uh in some magazine that they were that they loved each other like a family um right then Ted says oh that's just meaningless uh publicity and tells him that he knows nothing about the real bears and that they're not a family. So uh, Barry, you know, starts to realize the feeling of a real family is the people that love you. And so he decides he wants to go home and he runs to his house. Yeah, he runs. They've been like traveling Forrest all Gump. over the fucking runs. country in a bus, yep. but he somehow is able to run home. Not only that, but also know what directions to go. What roads? Because I'm assuming we're talking back roads here. Yeah, can't exactly run on the highway, you and, know, or it, expressway. But where, so, where, where were they? Were they, were they close to his house? Were they like eight states away? Like where the fuck were they? <laughs> like, who knows? That's the whole thing. What's the other thing? That's what now. That's what even makes it weirder. So, so far we uh, that we know of that they're, they're the only anthropomorphic bears that exist. They're also all happy to be musicians, and they're not family. So that means each one of them has parents somewhere. Yeah. Were they regular bear? So and that implies that there's other they... or or did these bears just one day learn that they could talk and sing and play, you know, 
bass guitar or shit. Um, what the fuck? You know, um, that's so- what I'm saying. Like, just teaching that happened where they parents were regular bears, but then some for some reason they became, you know, better don't bears. Don't tell them then because then the government might then try to track down these bears and like force them to keep breeding them because they want to have more bears. I so, like, think don't, that they were giving, even... giving sexual favors and then somehow they got better in the world because they were giving better head. And, um, <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That was exactly what's going on. No, so no. Well, that's what apparently people now are, you know, right wing saying about Kamala Harris. That, oh, oh, yeah. She slept her way up and blah, blah, blah. It's like, fuck you. Anyway, so I know we shouldn't say politics, but, but yeah. I don't give like, a fuck. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is a political and, uh, movie, my friend. Had... It's anti communist well, and, a... and, 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 and pro giving head, I think, or something. I'm not sure what I'm missing in this movie. Uh, but yeah, he runs like Forrest Gump home. Yeah, somehow knows that he's there, which is ironic I because which is ironic because Haley Joel Osment played uh, Forrest Young um, played played uh, Forrest Gump Junior. So oh my god, that's hilarious. Uh, yeah, and so yeah, no, and so like <clears throat> I still can't get over the name Better Hope. I I don't Me I either. Mean, I just why why would you do that? I don't get it. But like, and, and have brothers, so they're both in the same name. So you got to hear the same name being thrown around constantly. Mm-hmm. It's just so fucking stupid. But so <clears throat> he goes home. Everyone's like crying. Okay. But never mind. There's this, there's this, sorry. There's this part with the ham and cheeks. Yeah. Where that, where they show up for the first time when they're getting info on Barry. Yeah. And then he goes, he, he Harry or ham goes, Ham and cheats. Yeah, we get that all the time. And then the dad goes, "Well, oh, that's your name." <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> like, like, S- Stephen Tobolowski is funny though. So, um, so uh, yeah. <laughs> I love it, but sorry, that was like a throwback to earlier. Yeah, so, so they're all so happy it, to see him. It, it went, but, ahead, but there's another scene too where they where where uh because uh Barry had called Dex his brother. And uh, told him that, you know, he wasn't kidnapped and blah, blah, blah. And then Dex is trying to tell the cops and his parents and nobody's believing him. <laughs> it's just like. Yeah, that's the other part. So it's just like, so you think that he's been, he's been kidnapped and you're just like, yeah, who cares? Uh, you know. It... <laughs> <laughs> it's so fucking weird. And what, what is the, there's more chance, like actually a significantly more chance of him being actually being kidnapped by running home, perhaps <laughs> states away from home by himself, no identification on him, no nothing. He left all of his stuff apparently at, at the bus. I, I'm just wondering, so like, just, like, 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 is he he is he like Usain Bolt or something? Like, is he is he like you know, <laughs> able to like run? Yeah. Like, what the fuck is going on? Um. Anyways, yeah, like, the uh. I just, Nick, yeah, he, he got home, and they, they, they're, they're all they're all like happy and everything, and uh, of course, and so then he's in his room and he's taken down all of his his uh, country bear stuff because they disappointed him, you know. So now yeah. he's gonna stop liking their yep. music and everything, I guess. Um, <laughs> yep. Well. Yeah. Yep. Well, I've done that shit before too. Like when I find out something bad about somebody, I'm like, yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's a, a little kid. You mean it makes yeah. sense? Plus, yeah. you know, but, for me too. But, but usually, like when I stop liking somebody, is like when I find out that uh, that that R. Kelly is a pedophile. You know, that's when I start. Yeah. Well, it's usually something big. Yeah. Like, yeah. For a kid, though, it's big. You know, so and. uh yeah. I mean, I've been thinking of honestly burning off my Harry Potter shit just because of how crazy J.K. Rowling is getting. Yeah, you know? I mean, she's I mean, she's gotten to the point where she's almost like really, really far gone. So it's like I've been thinking, like, should I just throw the shit away at this point? Like, yeah, but but the thing is, know, it's like there's so many other people that went. It mean, at least the movies, I should say, there's so many other people that had a part in that. That's why I keep my my box set of the Harry Potter movies, but it's still well, that's different. The movies. Yeah. Yeah. Um, obvious, obviously, but, but yeah, so yeah, you're right. Go, sorry, go ahead. I, I didn't mean to like, yeah, keep doing but, but, but I don't promote book, book burning, even for something like that. I would just say, donate them to a library. Um, so, cause somebody, yeah, somebody will get enjoyment burn. out of them. <laughs> What's that? I see. Yeah, but it looks cooler to burn. Them. <laughs> I know. Just make a fire. With wood, don't burn books, because then no. you look like Hitler. Yeah, um, but it's, it's fun. This <laughs> you look like Hitler or, 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 or one of those crazy priests or or uh, ministers that want to burn books and shit. Um. Anyway, so we've got uh, but back on myself, back on track to the movie. Go ahead. <laughs> back on track to the movie. So so uh, yeah. 
he's taken down all this shit and then Ted comes in and, you know, is just like, you know, trying to basically apologize and tell him that, you know, you know, that, uh, that they're, uh, you know, that his, he realizes that the, the bears are his family and shit and, <laughs> and shit. Yep. So we then have one of the biggest twists in movie history. Cause we find oh, out yeah. that yeah. first off we find out that, that, uh, <clears throat> that, uh, Christopher Walken's character stole the bus and uh, then he's locked up the bears in cages. But in the scene, we find out, and I got kind of scared at first because yeah. uh, earlier on in the movie, <laughs> I forgot to mention this, they had a flashback to where uh, the bears first kind of got their popularity when they had a, there was like a uh, talent competition between between uh, them and a, uh, a arm musician uh -huh. yep. named Benny Bogswaggle. And... Uh, he, he his his uh his thing was that he could play music on his armpits like armpit farts um and so we yep. find out in this scene that that our uh our villain has been trying to destroy the country bears ever since that because he's actually the armpit guy Penny Bogswaggle yep because there yep. was a scene he's like and he's like he's like here's why and he starts like undressing and that kind of scared me because I was like I really hope that uh. <laughs> Christopher Walken's not about to get naked here in this movie. And um <laughs> No, I knew exactly what was happening. I'm like, oh, he's he's the armpit guy. I didn't want like, him to start I didn't want him like to bear bitch. himself. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Bear naked. <laughs> I didn't yeah, want him to get bare naked in front of the ladies. Anyway, so the uh That's the other thing. Did they even wear clothes? The bears? Yeah, they had clothes. But or, I don't I don't know. They were okay. I don't know if they had pants. I'm not sure. But Okay. Yeah. Because a lot of times animals don't have pants. I mean, with, yeah, with the, with well, the exception of, I, I mean, I mean, we have figured out that the reason that Donald Duck doesn't have pants is because him and Mickey are sharing an outfit. Because because yeah. Mickey has pants and no shirt. But uh, <laughs> wow. So <clears throat> so Thimple is turns out is Bogswaggle, and anyways, they they figure out where he is because of this. They track him with this uh this like bear tracking thing that was in with uh berry stuff in the in the in the um van or uh, not van the bus or whatever so they find where it is they they go off on looking for them and uh they they're 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 they're, they're, they're they got a boat that they're dragging behind their uh behind their van with uh ted in it because he can't fit in inside the minivan and uh they got this like crazy chase you know down the road and then they get to the place and ted goes flying with the boat into the place through the window and then he ends up knocking the cage door open and uh the bears are free and so now they can get back to the country bear hall and uh save the day right well no actually no we find out that simple that had paid the... rip not to promote the show oh uh oh double cross yep so uh we got two villains here and uh but then uh big al suddenly arrives and reveals to everyone that he promoted the show himself and everyone's in a different parking lot because he doesn't want them to ruin his grass out front oh god the grass bit again i swear to, oh i was so mad when they did that. i'm like really we're, we're going back to that so then a, a surge of the most excited extras I've ever seen in a movie come into the place. Yep. <laughs> like 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 they're about to see the second coming of Christ or something, you know, they're just like all excited. <laughs> it was just so freaky. No, no, they're like, no, they're literally like like, oh my god, Jimi Hendrix has been resurrected. I'm gonna finally mm -hmm. see him. You know, Jimi like, Hendrix who played country. the country bear hall at one point where he opened up for oh, vanilla oh, yeah. he opened up for <laughs> vanilla fudge. Yeah, sure. Um, and it's just like yeah. Um, so, uh, anyways, the the money they raise is enough to save the bears, and you know they perform. And Barry is now a new member of the band. And at one point, he has his he big guitar, guitar solo on uh on on, on a one string guitar. He's I like, hated that part. There's no way he would be able to play that solo. Yeah, I, I'm looking at it and I'm like, all of a sudden he's like he's like up here like he's fucking I'm Eddie Van Halen or something, and he's like. <laughs> just like what the fuck he's got one string so at first yeah so at first it was he was just playing like a lot of single notes so i was like okay that's probably fine but then he starts doing I'm like there's no way he'd be able to do all that <laughs> like just from sliding his his 
finger across the str- well, like he had like a slide on his yeah he whatever, had like a, like a slide but it's still like there's no way he should be able to do that and it's just like for one thing the bear shouldn't be able to play songs and guitars anyway because their hands are so large and i'm not sure how that would even work but in fine it's it is what it is i guess but uh yeah so that would mean to tell me though for six years they could have solved this problem and then they wait until they're 20k in debt and four days away from the building being demolished by a bitter ex-rival i guess or whatever you would call them <coughs> and then they're like no it's wait until it's almost over to do anything about it typical it's typical bear shit you know it's like the panda bears aren't like that you know you know how you can tell you know? like a, a, what kind of bear it is in their shit you gotta look for certain i'm joking <laughs> yeah i don't i don't so oh, so so, so there's I... like a little scene that... go, go ahead i'm sorry yeah no, I was just saying, like, there's, like, a scene near the end where the cops are, like, at the car wash, I guess, or something, or, like... Yeah, and th- then there's, then there's I... like, a little, there's a, uh, th- there's a little documentary thing playing during the credits where you got people like, oh. you know, like, Wycliffe Jean and Exhibit and, and, uh, Queen Latifah and Willie Nelson and everybody talking about how great the, <laughs> great the bears are and how inspiring they were to them. <laughs> Sure. Wait, old as the Bears, though, if they inspired Willie Nelson. Yeah, that's like, what I'm wondering. Like, what? Were they from, like, the 30s or 40s? I know. Like, I mean, like, 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 Willie Nelson, even then, was older than dirt. It's like, what the fuck? What's what saying? Yeah, exactly. Just like, really? Okay. Or maybe, yeah, who cares? I don't care. But so I went yeah. off on 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 on. This is going to be a tangent, but it makes sense here. So, so so you know the the restaurant scene where the waitress like singing and stuff. I looked up that yeah. place because I thought it was interesting. It was a place called Johnny's Broiler in Downey, California. It was originally known as Harvey's Broiler, but I noticed they had like a little what they call they actually call him the Fat Boy, and it was similar to uh, Big Boy. Oh, so, okay. So I went off onto this little tan uh, this little thing where I found the. Uh, I found, I guess, a lot of uh, m- movies, including um, Can't Hardly Wait, which we covered on this show, um, were filmed at that place. So I'm reading the history of this place. And um, so it closed um, at one point. And in uh, 2006, the owners uh, signed a lease with a new tenant um, who wanted to demolish the place. The city of Downey, oh. were, so, so this is very similar to the situation with the Country Bear Hall. <laughs> okay. The city of Downey rejected the demolition permit in November of that year. Oh. But the guy that bought it, Ardis Yannick, um, proceeded with plans to remove the structure anyway the following year. So he illegally demolished the place and they stopped him wow. halfway through the demolition because it was illegal. And, um, so then he, he, cause he, he didn't have permission to do it. And basically what ended up happening eventually, I'm just like kind of fast forwarding through this. They reconstructed the whole place to the original blueprints. Oh. And currently guess what it is. It's a Bob's uh, big boy. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> That's fucking great, man. Bob's all oh, got to love big boy. Yeah. So, so, so they basically, oh. It, it it's it looks exactly the, kind of the same except for now it's a big boy and uh, that's the way they got to save it. This guy this guy put a bunch of money in and saved the place. Um, they uh, reconstructed it and um, this guy who was like a um, franchisee of uh, Bob's Big Boy in that area. Um, what's his name? I was looking for his name because I wanted to give him credit. I can't find it. You can look it up, people. Um, so yeah, but he he uh, he yeah, fixed it. Go- but 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 this but this no. this uh, place has been used in uh bob dylan music video things have changed the movie one hour photo the beach boys and american family a abc movie the x-files falcon crest um the movie license to drive what's love got to do with it can't hardly wait as i said jawbreaker unstrung heroes and midnight madness reality bites shortcuts a sean kingston music video a john b music video a madonna music video uh, Goody Mob music video, The Country Bears, My Step Ma- My Stepmother is an Alien, Riot, Matchstick Men, nice. Heat, um, The Game, Mission Impossible Two, Bounce, 
um, Mad Men, Earth Girls Are Easy, Strange Drag music video, um, She's Out of Control, and Olymp Biscuit music video. So this place has been used a lot to film in. So, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I think that's, that's really kind of an interesting story that I just wanted to add on to the Country Bears because that was more interesting to me than the, actually mo the actual movie. So, <laughs> Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, so any any final thoughts here before we wrap this up? No, not really. I mean, this has been a long episode. In, in one of our <laughs> longest because, episodes ever. <laughs> because we got so hung up on the $20,000 part. I know. So, you know you know uh, what? You know what? Really, I, I do want to say, though, you know, if you want to keep the all too real two hall open, um, <laughs> <laughs> you can go to our Patreon <laughs> and you know become a member there. Also, you can go to yep. our T Public and buy some merch there. Go to all too real two dot com. Find all of our information there. You can also. Um, Go to Apple Podcast and give us a five star review. If you're the fiftieth reviewer, you can get a free T shirt from RT Public, any of your choice in whatever size you want. Um, and I'll be grateful and thank, and I'll thank you in an email too. Even, um, also, uh, just go out on the street and you know get the band back together and you know tour the world and sing the praises of All Too Real too. Sure. That's a good way to do it. And uh I can do it. Yeah. Any other uh words of wisdom for our fans out there, Sesame? No, I think I'm all tapped out. I am too. Sorry, guys. I barely got anything left in me. <laughs> barely. Anyways, <laughs> so just remember that <laughs> I love you. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> I can't do a Christopher Walken. <laughs> Sesame loves you. No. <laughs> Free Palestine, and until next time, bye bye. Thanks for listening to All Too Real 2 Podcast, a Cullen Park production. Produced and edited by Michael E. Cullen II. Music by Matthew Hawes. Subscribe and share the show. Visit us at cullenpark.com.